Okay, what do you think that I have gotten from you? Oh, <laughs> what have you gotten from me? It's funny besides because CF. Besides CF. <laughs> oh, that's so not funny. Okay, so today I have a special guest with me again. This is my lovely mother, Miss <laughs> Melissa Nordquist. Okay, let, let's start. Let's start at the beginning. Beginning. Um, how? What was I like as a baby? And mm -hmm. how was it having to be like thrown into the world of taking care of someone with a chronic illness when you were still young and all that? Oh. And it was your first kid. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, of course it was terrifying to be having your first baby and be told that. Um, you know, there's something seriously wrong right before I delivered you. And uh, so they rushed me to the hospital and they, you know, they hurried along the labor and everything. They said, we got to get her out. Something's going on. We're not sure what. But um, so right when you were born, you were born with these telltale signs of cystic fibrosis, which is meconium ileus, right. which is a ruptured bowel and all that. And they said, it looks like cystic fibrosis. And I remember thinking, oh no, it can't be cystic fibrosis. I don't even know what that is. Like, I've never even heard of it. <laughs> and uh, they said it was a genetic disease that your father and I both carried, and we didn't know that at the time. So it was terrifying. And, you know, 18 years ago, children did not have a really good prognosis. And so, of course, your father and I went right to Google search it, and uh, everything was really grim. And um, you, I remember they wheeled you off to the NICU, and you already were very alert, like as an infant. You were like, what's up? And we were walking, you know, with you down to the NICU, and you were just making eye contact and looking at us, kind of telling us that it was going to be okay. What are some really funny memories that you have throughout my childhood, like, fun, like funny hospital stories? <laughs> well, you definitely, definitely <laughs> hated to wear clothing <laughs> <laughs> and so anytime I would put clothes on you especially the diapers with the straps you would be all in your diaper and you'd be looking at me across the room it's like a standoff and you'd have your hands on the straps here and I'd be like don't do it and you'd walk and rip them off and the diaper would fall and you would just run run out the door and I was like Claire come back and so you were always stripping and um, <laughs> always stripping I have a, I have a good clothes. career yeah, opportunity ahead of me <laughs> Please. I was in the kitchen sweeping and we had this screen door, it was over in Santa Monica and Claire comes walking in and she's smiling, she's all proud of herself and I turn around and look at her and she has just the second half of a huge cockroach hanging out of her mouth and so I screamed and I dropped the brush with the broom because it freaked me out and then it made you cry and I was like, open your mouth, give me the mouth. and it was just a half of it. <laughs> So that was funny. <laughs> I can't imagine why you would think, oh, that looks interesting, I'm gonna taste it. How do you cope with the thought of me dying? Let's get serious. Wow. You're wow. off, sorry. No pressure. Wow, it's funny, that has transitioned <laughs> over the years. Um, I think right when you were a baby, all I could think about was, what if she dies? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> oh, but I think one of the biggest gifts of raising you has been it really forces you to live in the day. It's good, I have to compose myself anyway. Thank you, airplane. <laughs> um, this is what she has me do at home all the time. Oh, thank you, <laughs> So, um... Oh, sorry, it was my lung issues. Yeah, so like I was saying, when you were a baby, it was really hard to even look at you and hold you without thinking, she's going to die. It was so, you know, overwhelming because doctors would always tell us, you know, that you would have a very short lifespan, it would be horrible. And so I was really stuck in that. And I think what happened over the years is I've witnessed so many miracles, so many times where you were supposed to not live or things were so bad or this and that, and you would just carry on. So it's kind of forced me to... I don't think about that very often. I mean, I'm kind of at peace with it that if it happens, you know, I understand it's part of a progressive terminal illness, but I don't live in that reality all the time. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest gift. I remember I went to dinner with some friends of mine when you were in the coma and I said, you know, there were just so many things I still wanted to tell her. And those two friends reminded me of that recently. And I just feel so blessed that I got to. I can't believe I'm crying. I'm such a baby. Yeah, but I hardly ever think about it. It was just, I just remember thinking I wasn't ready. 
Yeah, there are other things I wanted to talk to you about. <laughs> so, yeah, that was that. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to other families dealing with chronic mm -hmm. illness or CF mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or any kind of mm. larger person? Um, I think, especially saying to the new parents, um, you know, things can look pretty grim out there, especially um, Googling cystic fibrosis and it's real easy to get caught up in the negativity and the drama and the fear, you know, going there, like, you know, having your mind go there to the future, to the inevitable end and all this. And I think it, what it really does is it just ruins, you know, the time that you do have. And um, so I think being positive is incredibly important and not only for you, but for your child and uh, for your community. And I think there's a real difference between being positive and being inauthentic. You know, I try not to say, everything's great yeah. all the time. Yeah. Because it's not. And it's a really difficult, challenging, time-consuming illness that's a struggle for everybody in our lives. But I think just the overall not getting sucked into the negativity and really, because I think it can cause yeah. depression and things like that. And, you know, just being open to miracles. and you know, celebrating and being excited about and acknowledging the triumphs, you right. know. Yeah, no, and totally. Not the, ignoring, not ignoring that mm -hmm. there's bad stuff, mm -hmm. but just celebrating mm -hmm. when there's great stuff. Mm -hmm. and like, yeah, and acceptance. Yeah.